I also made another prediction six years and a half ago. I said the United States and China both need political reforms. But in the case of China, small reforms have been going on all the time in the political system. We fix problems here and there. But I said the problem is the United States. Your political system was a product of pre-industrial year. And I made a forecast. I said, without significant, substantial political reform, my concern is, in your next elections, you will produce a leader worse off than George W. Bush. Yes. So, then, yeah. it, so it was you, it was not the Russians. Yeah. So, so this is... Uh, uh, the Chinese humble advice we can yeah, offer. But China is <laughs> a civilizational state. I remember when Henry Kissinger wrote his famous book on China. He started with this quote. He said, my goodness, look at this China. It's different. China used this unique language, which started 3,500 years ago. It's 1,000 years earlier than ancient Greek. 1,005 years earlier than ancient Latin. But these two European languages were dead languages. Chinese are still using the same language. This line of culture and continuation of civilization uninterrupted. So this is why we have, indeed, you know, for instance, this whole idea of meritocracy. Why is it confident? I said with my debate with Professor Fukuyama, I said, if you look at the top leadership in China, we've just had people's, uh, the party's congress, minimum requirement two terms of provincial governor or similar position, which may have to govern at least 100 million people, given the size of China, before you came to one of the top seven positions, decision-making bodies. I said to Fukuyama, I said, with this Chinese methodology, meritocracy-based system, we can say with certainty, we can improve the system, there are problems, we can fix it but we will not produce any leaders like George W. Bush. You know. mm -hmm. It's way below the Chinese bar. You know. That's my point. I, I respect deeply, uh, more than respect, I admire Chinese civilization. I admire uh, Chinese history. I have been all my life an admirer of uh, Chinese art since I was a very uh, young man, China has been one of my, the compass of my life, but I don't admire your political system. And I feel, I find much more admirable and worth of respect a system when you have the right to make a strike when you have the right to be paid uh, decently, when you have the right to speak freely, when you have the right to not to be contaminated by uh, terrible uh, pollution, and so on. So I, I will not say uh, in the name of uh, relativism and so on that every political regime are equivalent. I don't believe so. I really think that Europe invented an ID which does not belong to Europe, that uh, migrated to America, that has been adopted by a lot of parts of Latin America, that is incarnated in part of Asia, which is an universal ID, which is the ID of, uh, of freedom, of uh, equality, and so on. And China of today, is not worshipping these values. And that's why I do hope, I hope, I, I would be uh, um, happy, I would not say that to be surprised or not surprised, if there was one day a real Chinese spring, a real cultural revolution, as the one I saw in my youth, of Chinese people saying it's good to have wealth it's good to have gross products, it's good to have exportation, but it's good also to have human rights, I think that this would be a great news for, for humanity. You said that uh, Weiwei had this equivalence between political systems, 
But he does not have equivalence. He has a clear preference. He believes that authoritarian uh, systems are superior to democracy. He explicitly said that uh, democracy yields to bad governance, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, my, my question to you, there, there are millions of people today in the world that live under bad governance uh, systems, which are de democracies. China has a different view, and therefore you countries tend to like, tend to be very tempted to export their models. They like to, to see what they do replicated elsewhere. So would you recommend uh, um, to your government to, to go out in the world and promote what you think is good governance and, uh, and uh, a less democracy, you know, promote the cause of less democracy or non-democracy? Actually, it depends on how do you define democracy. I like this Nexus Forum because you said at the very beginning said we discussed the real meaning of democracy, real democracy. But unfortunately, so far what we see, as shown in Arab Spring, about one person, one vote, a multi-party system, that's at the best procedural democracy. That's not necessarily the real democracy. Remote democracy is far more important, as you said, about education, about many other important ideals. In terms of China, you know, uh, let me quote from, everybody knows, Confucius. <laughs> yeah. And he said, uh, people are like water. Regime or leaders are like boat. Water can carry the boat, can also overturn the boat. So if you look at the China model in particular, the key message is stay in touch with your people. It's so easy. If you go to Africa, don't go there with your brilliant ideas. I respect your preference. It's understandable. But you do some service. What are they care about most? If we just see what, what, what fighting poverty, fighting disease, street security, safety, etc., job creation. You do this accordingly, one, two, three, four. That's how China did. Would you how recommend the rest of the world to go that way and repress the options that he described? No, it's not his definition. It's really people should sit down and discuss what kind of political system we're, we're with your that. people. Yeah. We're doing that. Yeah, we should so, expect. China offers an option, which is very interesting because we have the so four decades of successful and experience. In your opinion, is that China should export that view? Uh, Xi Jinping said in his report, China. China's experience can offer an entirely new alternative for those countries and nations who desire for quick modernization and complete independence. And this is going yeah. to be a state supported export? No, no, it's not. <laughs> I'm joking. Actually, China is, uh, Chinese are very modest. I'm being slightly in the less modest. Yeah. Um, China do not export its model, do not advocate its model. But once you are successful, if you go to Africa, people talk about looking east. They have tried the Western model for decades, not working, you know. So look to the east. May I, may I just yeah. talk here about, Great, the, yeah. about the oppressed Muslim minority? So don't tell me that everybody is fine. There is an oppressed minority in China. And then I want to bring up something else here with it, um, in terms of um, uh, terrible things that are happening today, like in, 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 in Syria. And it's what is happening to the Rohingya Muslims. And the way I look at it is, I thought it was never again. And to me, never again meant a Muslim or a Christian or Jewish or Yazidis or black or white or any color. But today we are seeing a genocide. And I don't see, China has also quite a lot of influence in a place like Burma, like Myanmar. Um, apart from, I, I don't want to even talk about North Korea, but I don't see anything, anybody doing anything for, for, for the Muslims in um, Myanmar or the Muslims in, in China. Let me can I, can answer I, you I this question yeah, first. Yeah, no, because yeah. I do believe it's, uh, yeah. it's important, uh, because, you know that you know, because I do believe we go in a conversation in which you are saying how good you, you are, we are saying that we are, you are not very good. But in a certain way, the problem is that uh, <laughs> part of the Western democracy is also a problem today is that we lost curiosity on the others. Obviously, China's legitimacy is not based on caution only. 
And if we are not seeing this, we are basically playing a game. But on the other side, I do believe what you're also giving is a totally uncritical story because every political regime is successful under certain conditions and not others. I do believe one of the biggest problems that we have, we forgot what are the real advantages of democracy. The real advantage of democracy is not simply rights, but this is that when people are disappointed, you're giving them a mechanism through which they can react. Democracy is not famous for doing the right things, but democracy is famous for changing the governments that people don't like without violence. My question is the following. The Chinese system at the moment, in my view, works fine based on an incredibly important economic performance. How strong is the system? if economic performance is not there. So if we want to be serious, we should be open to the vulnerability of both regimes, because otherwise we go in a rhetorical story, which probably good uh, opera performance, but it is not helping us more. And uh, just on Bernardo and Lilivi, I do believe that the Spanish government should be very happy that you went to Kurdish regions and didn't end up in Catalonia at the same moment. <laughs> yeah. And I think that China will not go so far as you think, and maybe as uh, Steiner deserves, if she stays on this path. If you really believe that the Rohingya problem is a problem of faith, if, if you really believe that the Uyghur problem is a problem of religion, religion, it means that really you, you, your, your, your leadership has not understood how really a great power has to work in order to succeed. Because it is a human rights question. It is a democratic su subject. And it is not uh, NGOs of the West who are, uh, this is a plot theory, it, it's absurd. It is people who are in despair, the Rohingya. It's a terrible, nobody knew. No, 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 let me finish. Nobody knew in the West, <laughs> except a few of us, who the Rohingya were. They are the most miserable people in the world. They have no rights. Have you they have been nearly to no identity. Have you been to that region? No identity. I'm sorry? Have you been to this region? I've been uh, of there many I've times. Been. Of course I have yeah. been. You the, have to uh, see the uh, rapid my, rising my, standards of people's friend, life. My friend, I have been, yeah. alas, yeah. I am elder than you. Yeah. And I went to this it's area. Age of age. No, 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 no. It's no, no. you can seek truth or facts. I went in this area. all your surveys. I went. I'll give you another figure. I spent my the youth. I spent <laughs> my youth between Bangladesh and Burma. I, I know exactly. I know exactly Most what the is the countries. fate of a cursed Muslim people yeah. Yeah. in this yeah. environment. But in I know the who the Rohingya are. I know that they are yeah. they are man. Yeah. deprived of any rights. Yeah. And I know no world is that not in front of that, yeah. you cannot feel yeah. something else than yeah. despair. And they are despaired. And that's why they revolted. And the way in Mr. which they are treated is Levy. scandalous. Okay, mind your own business first. I don't agree. It's 89% versus 12% satisfaction. Oh, who does to speak in China it's, anyway? It's, 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 <laughs> you, you know really too little about China. Little knowledge is okay. dangerous. We have 130 million visits abroad. 3 million students don't abroad. Don't attack me about still my don't knowledge know. because that's not the right way so to go no, about even it. Even with that, we cannot agree to your interpretation. I, I would like to bring in uh, uh, something different.